Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today. I think we've got uh, got everybody joining in. So, um, hey, I'm excited that today we, we've got three special guests. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about um, harnessing IT um, to, to help with business transformation. And um, it was interesting, right? So, so for those of you that have joined our, uh, our webinars over the last uh, couple months through Corona, um, we, we've tried to tried to mix it up and do different things. So we, we've had comedians, we've had um, mythologists, we've had baseball players, we've had all kinds of topics. Um, and today we've got um, featured a handful of our clients, three of our clients, to talk about how they've been able to uh, to help with business transformation from an IT standpoint. Um, so, so first for introductions, I wasn't able to get all the videos that I wanted to play. Um, David, uh, Van, <laughs> you would send your video, but I never got them. And, um, Tom, I'm not a good enough, uh, Twitter user to go back and find your, uh, your singing, uh, debut on Twitter. So, uh, no videos today, but, uh, do want to, do want to introduce everyone. So we have, we have, uh, Tom Ehrman from, uh, formerly Dean Foods, which is now Dairy Farmers of America. Um, I probably should have uh, written down in my notes your actual titles, but Tom's uh, VP of uh, IT Infrastructure and Security, I believe, Operations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, David John, who's from uh, Texas Mutual. Um, Texas Mutual is uh, an uh, insurance company based in Austin, and David's the, uh, the VP of IT and Operations. And then Chris Lamondola from uh, MTP Data, and Chris is uh, one of the um, so anyway these guys we, we've had a, a great relationship with they're, they're great people so um, Chris Chris can probably tell you some of the best stories that, uh, that I ever hear um, David's got some pretty sweet dance moves um, so any of you that have gone to the uh, Gartner infrastructure conference back in December you could have seen those dance moves if you went to David's session and then uh, Tom he debuted a song um, a couple of years ago that uh, it was good. So um, you guys creative out on Twitter if you want to see it. But um, hey, so we're we're gonna have a panel discussion talking about this. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So Tom, I'm gonna start with you. Um, what uh, what common misconceptions do people have when it comes to the role that IT plays in the business? So coming from a uh, um, operational role, which is what I'm accountable for, the, the overall IT operations and security. But to me, the, the common misconception everyone makes is just that, and that is that IT and the business are different. To me, we're one. And, and in order to be an effective organization, you have to have your goals and objectives aligned. Um, the traditional us and them relationship IT falls into um, with the business is, is really when the goals and objectives become misaligned, their, their perceptions um, are not uh, favorable of each other. This typically comes into play when roles and accountabilities are not clearly defined or followed. When you begin to get what's called the shadow IT because the business is doing different things. But to me, the, the goal of an IT organization is to be what I call a trusted provider, not a service provider. The way you do that is exactly what my organization focuses on, and that is the operational stability and, and what I like to call the dial tone. Um, you know, that's just like the phone. You pick it up and you hear the dial tone. Um, that means things are working, service is reliable, it's stable, and ultimately it becomes that solid foundation um, of a trusted provider relationship you can build upon. Yeah, very cool. You know, you know, it's interesting something you said there, Tom. Um, you know, being being in, in you know more of a sales organization at Clear, where we uh, we focus on IT. I think IT is our customer, and sometimes we call it IT and then the business, right? So we're we're working with the IT guys to come up with solutions that that are delivered to the business. So I think that's a good point. That that right. I think we have to remind ourselves all the time, right? IT is part of the business. Yeah. Um, David, do you have anything to, to add to that around misconceptions people have when it comes to, to where IT fits with the business? Yeah, certainly, Phil. First of all, um, I, I'd like to plug that uh, we truly value the partnership with Clear, and it goes back extremely uh, a long time before AWS and data platform and data lakes and all of this was part of our daily uh, vocabulary. And just a, a quick note is when we started that relationship, I called John Progelhoff at Friday night, and he drove from Dallas to Austin to bring parts 
to address an issue. And so the support and the service and the solutions has been fantastic, but the people are even better. So if you, I'm sure everybody else has experienced that. If you haven't, that's a testimony. I'll be happy to talk to you later. Um, my perception is that the misconception in a lot of areas is that IT is expensive, slows down, they have their own focus, they're, they're focused too much on governance, security, and operational aspects, and that doesn't always align with the agility to enable business solutions. Um, I've been in that situation, I'm sure everybody else has, and I think that as you look at how do you build that relationship and start collecting data in terms that the business can consume and understand, and then start putting it into a taxonomy from a financial perspective, from an enablement perspective, that allows them to make decisions around technology and really starts looking towards you as a partner to enable them further, as opposed to a roadblock or a bottleneck to get things done. So I think data, all the data that we can get, transform that into a business understanding is absolutely critical and the first step to building the relationships and the partnerships. Very good. Hey, David, thank you for that. I did just have to scroll through and make sure John wasn't on this call because that might have gone to his head when you had talked so good about him. But, um, no, and I, I do I do appreciate that. I mean, I think that that's that's you know who we try to be and, and, and make sure that we're doing those things. Chris, any anything else that you wanted to add about uh, misconceptions people have when it comes to you know because your your perception might be a little different um, based on how you know how you have to support a client or a business. Yeah, so um, to me, uh, partnership really is uh, everything. And what I what I really want to do is uh, uh, I want my customer to view me as a full-on partner in enabling their business. And what I want to try and avoid is uh, that uh, that overemphasis on commoditization, right? Where they want us to be McDonald's. Uh, they don't want to put any thought into the kind of services that they're getting. They just want to toss an order over and get something back because I think that uh, uh, limits our effectiveness and uh, the scope of the service that we're able to provide. And it also diminishes our role in terms of uh, uh, a true customer service uh, uh, relationship and it, and it limits the business, the customer's business, quite frankly, because uh, uh, you know we never get to challenge their uh, perceptions about things and about how they run. Yeah, very good. You know, listen, I think I think those are those are all interesting things. I think that leads us well into into our next next question here, which is, um, gosh, this is this is a well written question, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just go off script here a little bit, but. Um, you know, here, here's the deal. It's interesting, right? Because because um, the, the next question is around um, how do we, you know, how, how does IT deal with and navigate prioritize requests from customers when you can continuously receive requests based on perceived needs, right? And and it's interesting because it kind of reminds me of, of some of the things we look at at marketing, right? We we have salespeople out there all the time. They're 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 throwing tools at us, right? Everybody's got a better way to solve a problem. Right. And, and so I can only imagine in, in your positions how it is when when people are are coming at you from from all aspects of the business saying, hey, I need this technology. Hey, I need a tool. Hey, I need infrastructure to run this tool on or I need a cloud environment to spin this up. How uh, how do you guys navigate and prioritize all those requests? And I'll, I'll, I'll go backwards this time. I'll start with you, Chris. Uh, well, uh, th that's always a challenge. Right. Um, the prioritization, um, you know, it's difficult. I know in the, the customers that, uh, that we serve, um, a lot of times the uh, individual departments have their own budgets and they're competing because they're, you know, they have their own agendas um, and you can't get away from customer politics. Uh, so it's hard to navigate that. I, I think that the most valuable tactic that, that I've discovered is uh, to try and back off of that a little bit and start asking why. Uh, so if we can get to what's the problem we're really trying to solve, what is it that you're really looking for, and let's not talk about tools right away, let's not 
immediately start talking about a cloud or you know some shelf or something like that let's let's talk about what the real problem is uh, it, it helps us to make smarter choices uh, and, and it leads to better questions and ultimately better solutions yeah very very good point right i mean i think it, it seems like the uh you know a lot of times people might come at you with uh with with a good idea of what they think they want but they they might not have thought through all the implications david have you have you experienced uh in any of these situations and, and how do you navigate and prioritize through these requests i think we all have and if you don't have that prioritization you start to thrash and time splice and and it creates a lot of frustration with um, the individuals and the engineers so as we went through our agile transformation and moved from a project to a product focus over the past year we did that in partnership with uh, business product owners and business leadership so we could have um, align the strategic initiatives for the business with the technology initiatives and so we've never been to the point where tech debt was part of a strategic initiative and the business understood the loss opportunity if we don't take care of that and then the opportunity for velocity and quality if we did so we put a system in place where it's very clear strategic initiatives create epics and on the epics you have stories associated through development quality security infrastructure operations and so forth so if you're an engineer in the storage or, or the cloud, you know exactly what you're working on and the priority, and the product owners help prioritize those activities. That's not perfect, but we're trying to use the system as much as possible so that we're focusing on the things that the business and the technology organization has deemed are the most important to accomplish. And it was extremely painful to get where we're going, and we have a long way to go. Man, I, I got to tell you, David, it sounds, sounds like you guys have, have fully processed the prioritization of, of, of what's happening. So that sounds, sounds pretty impressive. Tom, how about you? What, have you, uh, have you um, had, had to experience any of these things? Yeah, so the, the big thing that uh, um, you know, I look at is the first thing you need is you, have, you need to be invited to the table, if you will, to begin to work with your, your counterparts to begin to look at how do you prioritize those requests. At the end of the day, people are coming to you and they want things, and if you're not helping them in advance, prioritize and see the bigger picture. Um, again, coming from an, a purely operational stack perspective, the big thing is, is I look at how you get rid of the noise in the environment, and, and where VSI has really played key turn, a key um, uh, part of that for me is really looking at how you become proactive, how you quickly identify events or ongoing issues, how do you investigate them, take corrective actions, and go proactively to your uh, um, counterparts and let them know, here's what we're doing, here's what's going on. You build that trust, and again, back to that foundation I talked about earlier, that's then how you get invited to be at that table to begin having those discussions on the, the bigger priorities and the bigger transformational initiatives. If you don't have that foundation, you, they're not going to trust you with, with building a new house. Yeah, you know, that, that's a good point. In fact, it, you know, listening to your answers, all, all three of you, it reminds me of uh, the conversation Tom that I had with Brian. Um, so, so there was a guy, Brian, that used to work with Tom, and uh, we, we were at dinner one night with uh, when I think it was the, the head of supply chain that, that he used to work with. And uh, he said, he said, he said, you know, when, when Brian was the CIO, I always liked working with him and his team because I would take him, I would take him ideas or, or things I wanted to do. And, and he said, well, Brian, and I built a relationship it was interesting. Cause I went to him and I said, Brian, how much is it going to cost to do this? Cause this is something I want to do. And Brian's response was who cares, right? What you should be telling me is, how much this is going to affect our P&L positively or negatively, right? Is it, going to incre is it going to reduce our costs? Is it going to increase our revenue? And if you can tell me that, then we'll figure out how to do it. And, and I think, I think all, all of what you guys said, it, it goes back to your answers in the first question, which were um, how, how do we partner with all the different business units, right, to, to make sure that we're delivering. And so, so that, that was pretty interesting to hear your approaches and how you do that. Um, now, um, for those of you that uh, don't know, I'm going to shift now because um, now I need to get a little selfish and talk about visual storage intelligence and, and um, how, how important that is to everybody in, in accomplishing these things. But um, 
So I did, did have a couple questions here about VSI. So all of, all of you guys, so so for, for folks on the phone, I'm not going to go through a presentation or anything. This is really meant to be a high level. But um, one of the things that, that um, Tom, David, and Chris all have in common is they all, all use visual storage intelligence, which is a, a software as a service product that we've that, that we offer that does basically storage reporting and analytics and, and our, our whole our whole you know off, offering is around optimization how do we help people optimize their environment by providing visibility and allowing people to take actions in a storage space and, and heterogeneous environments and, and going into multi-cloud environments so um, if you think of that um, now all these guys use that so David we'll start with you um, can you talk through um, how VSI has helped create synergies amongst your team, but also across stakeholders? Sure, so data is extremely important for every decision that we make. And for me to get that data previously was a request, manual processes through the tools that we're familiar with on the storage or the compute environments, put it into a spreadsheet and then start analyzing that. Um, today that analyze that analysis shows up in my inbox. And if I need information real time, I could pull that. And if there's something really about to go wrong and, and my team's not on top of it, I get a phone call from Van or somebody from Clear saying, you need to look at this right now because we are forecasting that you're gonna run into a capacity issue on this environment at this date. Um, so start taking corrective actions. And we haven't fully embraced it across our, full, uh, our entire environment. But where we have, it's providing us insight that it, it was manually intensive to pull and then sift through and then start to make decisions. So synergies is not just uh, uh, for me to make better decisions or to be able to tell a story to the executive team, but it's also given insight across the different tech silos that we have all traditionally lived in, where they now understand what decisions that they're, being, that they're making has an impact in our compute and storage environments. So been very yeah. beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's one of the things that we see, right, is, is you know, when, when, I, when I talk about it, I always say there was, before VSI or when I'm talking to people about VSI, I always say, hey, today people are either using Excel spreadsheets and manual processes, like you just mentioned, or they, they've had to invest heavily in a big tool, right, a big SRM tool. Um, and and we, we've gone to market is, is calling VSI and SRM as a service. And, and not only is it because it's delivered as a software as a service, but because of what you alluded to with, with you know, maybe Van or someone reaches out to you as a problem, we've added some human intelligence to that as well to, to ensure that, that people are getting the value out of it. And Chris, you, you had kind of a different experience, right? And that um, you had invested in a big tool and then, then made a change. So how, is, how has VSI helped um, with those synergies across, you know, your team and your stakeholders? Well, it, actually in a couple of um, different ways. I, I think in the most important and the most immediate way was it, it made us look like we knew what we were doing. Um, the, the tool that we had before, uh, and I have a, a environment that's uh, roughly 30 petabytes worth of data now. So it's it, it, across multiple platforms and it's impossible um, really to know what's going on uh, there without a huge team because we all have, you know, manual processes and all of that. So we have this tool and uh, uh, the tool is uh, unbelievably difficult to work with. Uh, we couldn't get out of it the information that we needed. Um, it wasn't agile. We couldn't uh, respond to a customer's request for information about their own environment without you know days and days and days of labor and then what we would get back would not even be really what we needed. Um, so what, what VSI gave to us was um, the immediate ability to give meaningful reports to the executive team uh, that showed them their environment and increased their confidence in us in terms of whether or not we were actually capable of managing their environment and, and uh, that we were on top of it. And, and it gave it all, all those other little things, right? Uh, the early detection of failures, um, problems in the environment, all of those things. And, and those are, are worth tons. But the thing that's really uh, been a benefit, uh, especially now, 
is it allows us to ask better questions. So um, in a time when my customers are trying desperately to conserve capital because of the pandemic, we can ask better questions like, you know, let's look at all of the performance here before you spend money on an upgrade. Maybe you don't need a hardware upgrade right now, or you think that your tier one data needs to be on this very expensive platform, but your utilization statistics reported through the tool show us that, you know, that's not really necessary. You can get by on uh, something that's not as expensive. Uh, so the ability, I think, now to ask smarter questions and to uh, help the customer really conserve their capital, which is what's most important to them right now, really address that immediate need in a way that, um, frankly, I don't think they anticipated at all. Uh, it, it has been um, just a tremendous uh, benefit from BSI. Yeah, you know, and hey, so you know what, Chris, you 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 almost uh, made me jump ahead, right? But uh, in in I think Chris's points spot on, right? On the uh, right, we we understand that there's we're in a pandemic, right? Everybody's having to do things differently. Um, you know, I can tell you in my 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 experience over the last two months, right? Is is you know, I remember waking up one day saying, we have to close our office. How are we gonna How are we gonna be able to operate? Um, and, and, you know, going from that to what's going to happen to our business, what's going to happen to our people, how are we going to ensure that we can continue to pay everyone and we can get our jobs done to, um, when, once we got that figured out, we, we shifted to, now what can we do in the community and the marketplace? And, and I'll talk about it further at the end of the call here, but um, with VSI, exactly what Chris said, right? we're creating, helping create efficiencies and reduce cost is, is what we're trying to accomplish. And um, in one way that we do that is by giving visibility to different things. And, and so that's a, a good segue into our offer, right? So, so we've released an offer for any companies that have been, you know, negatively affected financially. We want to offer BSI use to help you not have to buy storage. Um, so, you know, we'll talk more about that at the end, but um, I think that's a good, good point, Chris. Uh, uh, Tom, how about you? Do you have anything to add about how, how this has helped you amongst your team or your stakeholders? Yeah, it's a little bit different direction. So we are in an outsourced infrastructure environment, and I've been involved in outsourcing for, for quite a while now. And you have good ones and bad ones. And really, when you what you need is that, that element of trust and partnership. And VSI actually helps drive that. It gives us a single version of the truth when it comes to storage and performance and the utilization to where we are able to, uh, um, you know, at our fingertips have a very um, just direct conversation with our providers um, on what's going on in the environment. They know what we're gonna be looking at and it just makes that whole element of, of that relationship so much, uh, um, so much better to operate in when you have that single version of the truth you all operate from. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a very interesting point you bring up, Tom, since at least on my screen, the guy sitting right next to you is uh, Chris with an outsourcer. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so that, it's interesting to compare and contrast that, right? So. Chris, being an outsourcer, said, I need a tool to share the truth with my end user. And then Tom, on the flip side, said, as an end user, I need a tool to, to make sure that, that we're on the same level of the truth with our partner, our outsourcer. Now, Chris's company is not Tom's outsourcer, so um, <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they're different outsourcers. But um, but I think, think it is interesting to see that. Um, all right, so, so ne next question. I'm trying, trying to think. Uh, you guys, your answers were so so efficient. Um, it might make me have to skip a question here or there. Um, so, David, let's start with you. How has has VSI been able to help you decrease the amount of effort required to support your end users? It it, it has. General answer. Um, let me add on to the last question. But you know, one thing as I was listening to the others and and building that trust is one thing that's helped us out as we split into product teams aligned with the business, underwriting claims, customer experience, all of those things, is that it's helping us provide a cost 
for those product lines, which provides more business insight is, are they getting the value with the associated infrastructure cost aligned with that product? So, so that's, that's been huge for us, just giving them that insight, and helping to make better business decisions. Um, and as far as the question was the effort to better support our end users, it, I, I think it aligns with the other answers that we talked about. If you have more insight, you could be more proactive with the data that you have. You can tell a better story. As we're looking out is we, we still are in a leasing environment as well as transitioning to the cloud. We can start forecasting months in advance what that lease is going to look like. How can we shift consumption models based on trends with the data for the different product lines? So extremely invaluable to become more prepared into those negotiations with our vendors with what we need. Very good. Sorry, I'm, my office is open here and my daughter's walking downstairs, so she made me laugh. Um, I was wondering if I said something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, so, so Tom, what about you? Uh, have you been able to better support your end users or is it allowed yeah. HCL to better support yeah. the end users? Yeah, and so, you know, to me, it, it, it's when you look at that, you, there's really two ways that you can reduce that effort and, and be more, um, you know, quick with that uh, um, ultimate resolution. The first one is, is obviously present the issue from occurring. Um, you know, know what's going on in the environment and be able to pre prevent it from happening in the first place. The second one, is to more quickly get to that identification of the cause phase. You know, you know, you, when you think about it, the outage occurs, you do all the research and investigation to understand what's the issue, and then you go out and then you address the issue um, with the long-term fix. Um, VSI for us plays, plays a role in both spaces. One, it allows you to be more proactive, as you heard David talk about, and do forecasting and trending and, and, and become proactive with what you're doing. The other thing that allows you to do is when you begin looking at it, you can begin to look at some different trends that have been going on and get to the root cause quicker to understand why, correlate that with change data. And, and during the incident, VSI brings you insights that of the leading events that led up to that from happening, um, as well as then help direct where you go to uh, from there um, to help resolve the issue. One of the examples, probably the best examples, we had was we had we we're having a, a, what we viewed as a uh, um, issue with our uh, um, CPU, and um, Clear came in and one of the things that they did they brought in um, the VSI reports. We started going through it, and we ended up moving um, a, a decent amount of our storage to the to flash storage, and we were CPU bound. That's what the indicators were telling us, but the the the, the, the true data, if you will, around this was, it was, we were, had bottlenecks on the disk. We put that in, we were able to save a significant amount of money when it came to uh, the uh, uh, you know, purchase of a new CPU and license cost and all of those type of things, which by the way, would have been bought from clear. Um, but instead we were able to, to you know, navigate to a much uh, a more uh, cost-effective solution and deliver better service to the business. So bottom line, Tom, you saved money. Yeah. That's what I heard. All right, cool. Chris, you, you have anything to add about, about how it's been able to help uh, support your, your end users? Yeah, well, I mean, it's given us a lot of the same things, right? So um, it's allowed us to be more effective and uh, more efficient from an operational perspective. Um, it's allowed us to be more proactive um, uh, from a, you know, sales uh, perspective, I guess. Um, but as a, as a longtime ops guy, um, who's always challenged with wanting to get down, you know, into the forensics and stuff like that and deal with, you know, day-to-day -day ops things, um, what the tool's given me personally as a leader is it's given me space, right? So I got space now where I don't have to deal so much with day to day uh, in, in that area, and and I can use that space and that time to pull myself out of the day to day and think about bigger issues for my clients. Right? I can think about larger issues. I can try and think about uh, you know the trends that are driving their business in a macro sense. 
uh, and I can ask them better questions. Um, and, and I, so I think what, what the tool has given me um, is an ability to drive more business because it's given me the freedom to be able to ask better questions. Yeah, very cool. That makes perfect sense. So, you know, it's interesting. I was just on a on a call with uh, you, know, you guys talked about some some problem determination stuff and some some visibility. I was this morning. I spent a couple hours on a call with one of the analyst firms, and and they were uh, they were going through a review with me on what does the market look like that VSI is in, what's happening, how's it evolving, and and you know their their opinion is that if you look at the traditional big heavy SRM tools, you know, like OCI and and, and IBM Spectrum Control and some of those that those those are evolving to being more, um, you know, orchestration provisioning kind of tools, and that the the vendors are all looking inward and saying, hey, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna have very very good tools that come with the storage arrays themselves to help with um, problem determination stuff. But really, what those are built for is the uh, the portal, I call it the portal into support. Um, they're, they're, you know, Nimble, I think, was the first one to release one that HP bought Nimble so that they could have that tool pure, was probably the next big one that came out. Now all the other vendors have, have kind of followed suit with the, these tools that, that provide that visibility into really operational problems around the specific array, but none of them roll up into, into the overall heterogeneous view, right? And so so when I look at, at, at the three of you, right, you guys all have more than one storage manufacturer in your shop and, and you need that roll up view. Um, as you look at that, you know, I think, so, so that's from an operational standpoint. And what, one of the things that we focus on with VSI is making sure that we're providing good visibility for the, that, that admin and manager operational view, the, the director VP like you guys um, that need a higher level view? And then, you know, is there anything up up above that that, that can make a difference from our business unit reporting, some of that kind of stuff? Has, has the use of BSI changed your relationship at all with either your management or your people in, in, in being able to have these different views? Um, and Chris, you're up, you're up big in my face right now, so I'll start with you. Well, I, I think I've mentioned before, um, uh, from a forensic uh, perspective, when we have an incident, uh, it's extremely powerful uh, because we have all this data. We can go right back um, and uh, uh, take a look at something and really determine a, a, a root cause through um, a, a tool without having to spend a lot of manual time. Uh, you know, running all over the place. Um, so it's great for that. Um, it, it's great as, uh, uh, you know, a confidence builder, I think, with uh, the customer uh, because they can see the reports. They can log into the portal uh, and take a look at stuff if they want to. Uh, so, you know, the, the tool's empowering on, on a, a number of different uh, levels. That's been great. It's been great for us, I think. All right, cool. And um, David, what, what about you? Is it, have, have you noticed any any effect or change on your relationship with either your management, your team, or your your end user? Hey, absolutely. So um, a couple of things. The first point is Tom made one that I don't want to let go by is that with the data um, and having Clear provide some guidance is that we've avoided purchases too that would have gone through Clear. And so they're really looking at taking the data to provide the best decisions that we need to make for our business. But as far as the, re and that's huge because there are a lot of vendors don't operate that, a lot of partners don't operate that way. Um, as far as the relationships, uh, having more insight across the teams that I mentioned was huge from the technology teams. Um, as we're introducing more machine le uh, learning and AI into our environments and the data is just exploding, being able to control that and have those conversations with those that have huge appetites for data has helped that relationship because they live in data terms and that taxonomy. And so being able to show them statistics, trends, forecast has been helpful. It's avoided conversations with my manager as we've been able to take, um, take actions as opposed to asking for funds to increase. So that's helped. And then what I mentioned earlier on the 
product teams, um, and we're not there yet, but we're working on it, is help them assess the infrastructure cost associated with the total product cost. And, and so building that relationship builds more trust and insight, which they've never had before, right? Infrastructure has been a black box. There's a cost associated with it. We had to do it. And now we can start putting some discretionary and non-discretionary levers around that. And they could make decisions around the discretionary levers on the infrastructure side based on what they need from the business. And having that insight helps quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. That makes perfect sense. And Tom, do you, do you have anything to add? You know, I, I like how you guys keep referring back to what each other said. Um, <laughs> the, Tom, the, yeah, you the, have anything to add yeah, to that? Any relationship, it comes down to trust. And, and I talked about that and, and the way you get trust with, with your um, business partners is by repeatedly doing the same things and, and being predictable. And that's exactly what VSI um, does. You know, I, we talked earlier, I mentioned dial tone. Um, you know, that we all just take for granted. That's what you need to become for the things like the day-to-day -day operational support. And, and so things, you know, when you look at VSI, it allows us to become closer to just that, the dial tone. It, it, it's expected and it's always there. It, and that's what we need to be able to provide from service. Once you get that, you can then begin to look at how do you truly create relationships that the business has, um, you know, with, with, it, with, with each other to look at how can you continue to add value. That's perfect. So, so in closing, you know, the last question, right? So the reason, and, and for everyone to call, the, re the reason we, we asked Tom, Chris, and David to all join was, was they're all, they're all in businesses that are, are in the midst of transformation, right? And, and so, you know, David spoke at the, uh, the Gartner conference about their, their transformation from traditional IT to DevOps and, and all those cool words that, uh, you know, you like, you went from saying, hey, I ran on this server to like, you got like all these open source tools and all these different things. And, and David's done an incredible job of leading that transformation, right? Tom, Tom's in, in an environment that just has gone through an acquisition and, and, and seen significant transformation. And, and then Chris in, in the, the outsourcing business, which I think that overall business has gone through a transformation. Um, you know, and, and it wasn't, I'm going to tell a story. It was not Chris's company and it was not Tom's outsourcer, but about 10 years ago, I met with an outsourcer about VSI and I was talking to him, to him about the visibility and how it was going to help him do all these great things. And, and I was selling. And um, the guy said, Phil, I, we won't buy your tool. It's going to cost us too much. And I said, you must not have looked at the quote I sent you. It's not that much. And uh, he goes, I don't care how much it costs. He said, what if we're overcharging our customers for storage? And then we have the truth, we have to charge them right. And I think that that was a sentiment from an outsourcer that, that honestly is no longer around. Um, but, but Tom and Chris and David all mentioned trust, right? And, and I think that that, that industry in the, in the outsourcer, outsourcing business Trust is paramount, right? You, you can't you can't take care of your customers, and, and there's been these these transformations that have taken place. Um, so, guys, is there anything else that, that that comes to mind that you know you want to share about how IT is has played a part in the business transformation that you guys have experienced? And Tom, I'll start with you. Hey, to me, you know, it, it, it's we know exactly what you said, Phil. It, it's about trust in that relationship. And how do you get rid of the noise in the environment? How do you get rid of the little blips here and there, the, the little things that cause an issue? And, and how you, that will then allow you to have that seat at the table, to be invited to be there and to begin talking, to understand their, their goals, understand their objectives, and then become look at how do you deliver value to that. If you're having issues, if you're, if you're not predictable, if you don't have that relationship, you're, you're simply just not going to be asked to come sit at the table to even hear the story. You're going to ask to sit at the table to have, you know, what handed to you um, so you can go leave and fix it. So then they can talk about the goals and objectives and that's not what you want. Very cool. Chris? Yeah, so I, I think it's easy to always get trapped in the uh, uh, the low cost uh, discussion, right? Uh, because that's what we always experience. Everybody wants year on year reductions. Everybody wants, 
you know, greater efficiencies. Uh, uh, so it's real easy to get caught up there. And uh, I, I think from a general perspective, what I, what I try and do and, and what I encourage, uh, uh, you know, my readers, I try and give them the information they need uh, to, to be able to not get caught in that conversation and instead um, to try and expand the scope of their thinking and think broader, um, think bigger, ask bigger questions. Um, I personally want to indulge my curiosity more, try and find things uh, that are not immediately apparent because those kinds of conversations are the ones that lead to more business opportunities, right? And they deepen the sense of partnership uh, that that you have with your with your customer, so that it, it doesn't it, it doesn't always revolve around who's writing the check. Yeah, very good point, David. Anything yeah, we, closing? We yeah, I agree with both Tom and Chris, and, and good points is that we had to change our approach significantly. It's not a technology discussion. Uh, I probably read more in the past year than I did in college is, you know, the customer value chain, the goal, all of those things to, to look at technology from a business perspective and then be able to present it in terms that they understand and they can consume and then they can make decisions around. So the communications the relationships are key and they will have to evolve to get that seat at the table, as he mentioned, and then making sure that you can clearly articulate where your future aligns with the business initiatives, how, they're, how they are aligned, how you're making progress, how they understand it, and then keeping those commitments. So with all of our change, you know, a big aspect too was organizational change management, which we could have done a little bit differently, maybe a little bit better. But if you're looking through, looking at transformation and getting a seat at the table and partnering the business to enable their solutioning and looking, having them look to you to bring solutions as opposed to services, um, that's a big aspect of that transformation. Yeah, very cool. Hey, let's see guys, that, that, those are all great points. And um, so, hey, thank you guys all for joining. Um, so, so Chris, Tom, David, um, greatly appreciate you guys being here. Um, I, I owe you all a, a meal or a drink or something we can get out and uh, spend time together again. And um, hey, I think there there are a couple couple interesting points. So in closing, um, you know, I, I didn't want I wanted to make this about um, David, Chris, and Tom's experiences. And so so in closing, a little about us for for I know there's some some folks on the call that uh, we haven't uh, haven't done business with before, haven't talked to before. But uh, as these guys mentioned, right, we have we have Clear Technologies as our as our legacy reseller business. Um, and and so from a Clear Technology standpoint, we've been around for about 27 years selling data center infrastructure solutions. So primarily compute, storage, networking, and the data center um, is where we're focused. We have a, you know, a large team that does that and, and a consulting team that supports that business. And then, then we talked a lot today about visual storage intelligence. And so if you look at our, our history or, or approach, right, when, when we look back about 10 or 12 years ago, we said, hey, in that reseller community, it's, it's what we call the CSA miss. Um, there's a lot of resellers out there that, that can all do very similar things. And so how do we shift that and make sure we differentiate ourselves in the market? And that's where visual storage intelligence came from. We, we, we made a decision to shift from just being a reseller into developing some IP around uh, storage management and, and visual storage intelligence. And so we've taken that to market. We have customers, um, you know, like Chris today that, that we just sell VSI to and, and support and take care of. We have customers like Tom and David that um, we do both, right? They, they use VSI and we, we resell the infrastructure for their environments. And so, you know, our, our goal here is to, to, you know, get out, meet new people, share new ideas. Um, through through COVID, we, we started this, I think this is our eighth, eighth weekly webinar. Our marketing team has been, um, you know, they, they sit there and look all like, pretty and done up with their hair and ponytails on, on a WebEx and uh, they're, they're pedaling like crazy underneath. They're kind of like a duck, I guess, right? And um, make, making these things happen. But uh, we're, we're, we've got another uh, remainder of the series coming up. We're gonna take off next week since Monday's a holiday. 
Um, the following week, I believe we're going to do uh, do one around returning to work um, in, in COVID. So um, we, we partnered with Hitachi um, data systems around uh, uh, technology that, that uses camera and, and camera that, that takes temperature uh, mixed with some analytics. So there's a, a solution that, that we have proposed to a couple of our clients that um, is, is a camera with a, a TV screen and some analytics built into it. So every time someone walks in your office, or your building, it, it scans their temperature and, and displays information on it on the uh, on the screen, so everybody knows that, that it's a safe environment to enter. Um, and I think think that that's a lot a lot of what businesses are focused on right now is how how do we prepare for the return to work. Um, and then following that, we're going to go into a series on um, kind of capex versus opex. It seems like um, I tell people uh, no matter what we're proposing, our customer needs the other. Um, so, so, you know, if, if, if we're proposing a, an on-prem solution that, that, that's heavy on capital expense, they need it to be operating. If we're proposing some kind of cloud offering, they need it to be capital. Um, so, so we're going to go into a series on that, some of the, the you know, values and differences between the uh, capital versus operating from a technology standpoint. Um, and that's going to be a four-part series, I believe. We're going to talk about it in the compute space, the storage space, security. Um, and then uh, I think one of the analysts is gonna, gonna do a presentation on some things um, that they see in it. So um, here's the other guys, we're, we're here to, uh, we, we understand we're in, a, in an interesting time right now. And, and so we wanna do what we can to help support um, organizations the best we can. Um, and, and I mentioned earlier, we do have an offer for, for folks on the call. If, if, if you're trying to cut back on storage expenses, um, whether it be some operating expenses, some um, capital expenses. Um, we're offering VSI at, at no charge for a period of time to allow people to um, take advantage of, of, of reducing costs and reducing spend. Um, we we want to make sure we see uh, as many companies as we can come through this and, and be healthy and get back to normal. So th this is the one thing that we think we have to offer that, that can, can make a difference. Um, we, we've had, had a handful of folks take us up on this and we've already been able to help save some people from buying storage purchases that they had planned on buying. Um, with that said, uh, Mike Damon just put my contact info up here. Um, Nick, I, I think will be reaching out to, uh, to most of you uh, as a follow on. So, you know, the next steps, if interested, we'd love to schedule an individual demo. Where we can have a conversation with you about um, what we're doing with VSI and how it can make a difference for you and, and make it more personalized. So, uh, Thank you guys all for joining and that's all I have.